Screwbox here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to cover recreating the Stardew Valley fish tank in Godot game engine. We'll cover topics like enums, particles, movement, color, and a few others. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Okay, let's get started. We have a main scene, a tank scene, with a sprite on it and a fish scene with the kinematic kinematic body 2d and then we have in our textures folder we have a bubble fish tank shadow and a sprite sheet which is the fish Let's start with the tank um the sprite is just a sprite that covers the whole thing it looks like an aquarium and it's offsetted by half and a half so it's in the middle we're going to add to it a no 2d We'll move it up to the tank level, and this will hold um, the top left variable. So we're going to have to, and a bottom right, we're going to have to say where the fish can be at in the aquarium. So top left is going to be the top left corner that they can be in, and we'll do it a little offset a little bit from the graphics itself, just so the, cause the fish have a certain width and height to them. And we'll do the bottom right the same way. And we'll get it above the sand. Because the sand is where the shadows are going to be. Next we're going to have a no 2D with, that's going to hold the fishes that are in the tank. And we we're going to have a no 2D that's going to hold the shadows that are in the tank. And shadows, we want to move it down to the middle of the sand. So the shadows move back and forth on the sand. All right, let's add a script. Not to shadows, but to tank. Get rid of some of these um, comments. We'll rewrite our ready function here. And we'll add a new function called process fish. And it's going to loop through any of the um, child nodes of the fishes. And then we'll call that from the ready method. And we'll come back and fill that in later. Okay, on to the fish scene. We're going to add to it a sprite. We're going to add to it a collision shape 2D so the fish don't run into each other. We're going to add into it a animation player. And we're going to add to it a shadow, a no TD, no TD to hold a shadow. And then underneath that, we're going to have a sprite. Just so we can keep the sprite, for, that is the fish and the sprite from the shadow separate. And we're going to have a timer, but we need to move it up to the top level. Okay. There's four frames to this, so set that to four. And 
and then so the fish don't run into each other we're going to set a little collision shape around the fish make it a little bit smaller And then the reason the shadow for the shadow sprite, which is just a brown circle, black circle. And then the timer, we want to um, create a script for the fish so that we can add the timer um, on in method. I think that's what it's called. Go to the timer, go to the node tab, timeout. Not on in is timeout. So on timer timeout. So whenever the timer times out, it's gonna trigger this method. All right, so let's go ahead and start adding some variables. So shadow, we're gonna get a variable that's associated to the shadow um, node 2D. And then we're going to get a speed variable here so we can set how fast the fish is moving. And we're gonna say um, how long uh, between the timeouts basically. So we're gonna call it a time between movement. And then we're gonna need a random number generator to help us figure the state out. And we're gonna do velocity because we have a kinematic by 2D. So we're gonna do a moving slide later and we wanna Calculate the velocity before we call it. And then next we need a variable for the timer. So we'll shorthand here and say timer. Let's go ahead and move this down to the other on ready. And then uh, we're going to make an enum for all the states that the fish can be in. So he can either be stopped, he can be going left, going right, going up, going down. And then um, we're going to get a variable to hold where the tank top left is and the tank bottom right are. And they'll both be vector twos. And those are those variables that say how big the tank is, basically. How much room the fish can swim in. And then we're going to hold a variable called shadow y, which holds, um where the Y uh, position is for the shadows. So they can move back and forth on the X where the fish moves, but it'll be stuck on that Y. And then we have a variable for the state. And then we're going to randomize the random number generator. So each time we run the aquarium, it, it behaves differently. And then we'll have one for the uh, set the tank area, which is going to take in the two parameters, top left and bottom right. And we'll set those to the global variables we have there. And the next function is um, a setter for the speed. And we'll set the speed equal to the fish speed here. And we're going to call these methods from that process fish in the uh, tank script. And if you have a different way of doing that, let me know in the comments below if you think there'd be a better way to set variables on 
one node from another. And this is the last one for now. We're going to do um, set shadow Y. And so whatever we pass in there is going to be where the Y uh, position is for the shadows. I'm checking my notes and um, the uh, physics process. So this is a normal physics process that comes in Godot. And we're going to do a match call here and we're going to say if the state is stop, then move the x0. And if it's left, move it 10. If it's right, move it minus 10 and then up and down. Or up, yeah, so up and down. So the setting the y. And then it, we're going to also flip the um, sprite. So the fish is pointing left or pointing right depending on which direction and x you're going. And then we're going to do move and slide the velocity times the speed with the up um, vector. And we're going to make a method to reset the state. That gets called when the timeout happens and in other cases as well. And so we're going to reset the state using the random number generator between a value between 0 and 4. And if the movement is stop, uh, we're going to use this code later. But for now, we're just going to say pass on it. So if it's stop, it's going to do one thing. If it's moving, it's going to do another on that reset state. But we'll come back to that later. And then we'll call the reset state from the on timer timeout. Okay, now let's make the fish move around. So on our timer, we need to make sure it's on auto start. So when it comes up, it'll move around. Try the king, there's nothing there because we haven't added the tank to the main scene. And we haven't added any fishes to the tank. So let's add the tank there. And then on the tank scene, under fishes, we'll link one of the fish. And we'll move it to the middle. And we'll run it. And the fish is there. And a little bit, he'll start moving around. And his shadow is still stuck to him because we haven't called that method yet. But we'll go to the tank script. And now in our for loop, let me get my code. We're going to do first, we're going to set the shadow. So we're going to say the global position of that shadow. Uh, variable on this scene is going to be passed in to the set shadow of the fish. And then in the process uh, method, we're going to um, set the position. So make sure that it stays in those bounds, those top left and bottom right, and then we're going to set the position of the shadow. So now you see the shadows down there at the bottom. And the fish is moving around, and it's, it's bound to the um, top left and bottom right variables. Okay, let's add some more features here. So we're back in the fish script and we're going to add a couple more methods. Uh, let's set time between movements and set fish color. So set time between movements is how fast he changes direction and set fish color, as you guessed it, it changes the color of the fish based upon the sprites modulate value. And so we need to add that to the process fish. So when it initializes the fish, it sets those two variables. So set fish color, and then we're just using a random range between one and zero and one to set it for each red, green, and blue. 
and then we'll call the set time between movements and we're gonna have to floor it because it's a uh, we want make want to make sure it's an integer and it's a value between zero and three so it's either zero seconds or three seconds Okay, now we're going to add some more fish to the scene. And we'll just move them around so they're not on top of each other. That one's good. Now if we run it, you can see all the fish have different colors. The time between their movements is random. So it's really starting to come along here. And in the future, we could probably add um, scale, those kind of things. Okay, now we're going to use particles to make some bubbles for the fish. So let's go ahead and add a particle um, 2D to the scene. And then we're going to get it, make a process material here particle material and it defaults to have gravity in it um, we're going to use for our texture we're going to use the bubble here just a single bubble and it's kind of large so we're going to scale it down to a quarter of the size and then we're going to go into our particles and set up the parameters here. So gravity will set it to nine, negative 98 because the bubbles are going to go up. And we'll set the amount way down to three. And then the time, basically how long they live, uh, we'll set that to Three, maybe, maybe, or four. We'll set it to four. And then we're going to come back down to our reset state, and we're going to say only when the fish is stopped is it going to emit bubbles. So we're going to say visible equals true. You could also say, um, I think it's enabled. I'm not sure which one's better. Probably enabled is better because it um, won't run, but I'm, I'm assuming visible also turns off that logic as well. Anyway, you can see the fish has bubbles now. Well, I hope you liked this uh, tutorial. Uh, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. And we will see you next time.